Welcome to section 14.1c. All right, gentle people, we're going to go ahead and start off with a quiz question. So do me a favor and try to answer this question. Now, before you tackle this problem, I want you guys to go ahead and try to draw this molecule, draw all the orbitals that are overlapping that will generate bonds in this molecule. All right, gentle people, here's the molecule that we're interested in. So the first thing we want to do is we want to go ahead and write the hybridization of each atom. For hydrogen, it is not hybridized, and it is just going to use its S orbital. And that's going to be true for both of the hydrogens here. Now, our carbon is steric number two, and that's going to be true for both carbons here. So if we have steric number two, what you guys will remember is the hybridization needed to accommodate the electronic groups here is going to be sp hybridization so each one of these carbons are sp hybridized so let's go ahead and draw our carbon and i'm going to go ahead and draw my sp orbitals now my sp orbitals there are two of them and each one of these are going to be 180 degrees and then i have my hydrogen and it just has an s orbital and that s orbital is going to overlap with this sp orbital if I wanted to look at the symmetry of this bond, what I have to do is, is I have to look at the bonding axis. And the bonding axis is from this hydrogen to this carbon. And what I can see is if I rotate this overlap between the s orbital and the sp orbital, what I would see is that this is a symmetric overlap or a symmetric bond. So that means this overlap here is sigma in symmetry. So this represents the bond between the carbon and the hydrogen. Now I can do the same for the other carbon. It's sp hybridized, so the sp orbitals are 180 degrees. The hydrogen is just an s orbital. It overlaps here, so that is going to lead to a bond between carbon and hydrogen, which is sigma in symmetry because it is symmetric with the bonding axis. So that's the hydrogen carbon bond on the other side. Now what you guys will notice is that I have an overlap between the two sp orbitals of each one of these carbons. Again, this is symmetrical with the bonding axis. So this bond is symmetrical with the bonding axis, so that means it has sigma symmetry. This represents one of the bonds between carbon and carbon. But let's remember what happens when we sp hybridize. We are going to have two p orbitals that are unhybridized. So this carbon has a p orbital that's unhybridized, and so does this carbon. And there's another p orbital that is left unhybridized. Now remember, these unhybridized p orbitals are 90 degrees away from these sp orbitals. So one of these p orbitals looks like this on this carbon, and this carbon has a p orbital. And let's say that this p orbital is going up and down, so it's 90 degrees from this sp orbital. Now these are going to overlap. What you guys will notice is that this overlap is not going to be symmetric with the bonding axis. That is, if I look at the axis between this carbon and this carbon, this overlap right here is above and below, and so when I rotate around that bonding axis, I will be able to tell that this is rotating. So it's asymmetric with the bonding axis. If it's asymmetric, this is going to be pi in symmetry. So this overlap makes up the second bond between carbon and carbon in this molecule. Now let's take care of the last unhybridized p orbital. Now again, this is 90 degrees from that other unhybridized p orbital and 90 degrees from the sp orbitals. So this orbital is going in and out of the page, whereas the other p orbitals we're going up and down. So again, we have an overlap between our p orbitals, and this overlap is asymmetric with the bonding axis. That means that this bond is pi in symmetry. 
Now this overlap is the third bond between carbon and carbon. And that's why we say that this carbon has a triple bond between it. There are three overlaps here. The SPSP overlap, the P orbitals that are going up and down, and then the P orbitals that are going in and out. You guys can see a 3D rendering of this molecule. You guys can see the overlap between the S orbital of the hydrogen and the sp orbital of our carbon. And you guys can see the p orbitals go ahead and make this overlap and show you guys that this is pi in symmetry. So if you guys count everything up, there should be three sigma bonds and two pi bonds in this molecule. A general rule of thumb, if you have a single bond, that single bond is going to be sigma in symmetry. It's symmetric with the bonding axis. If you have a double bond, one of these bonds is going to be sigma in symmetry, and the other bond is going to be pi in symmetry, where it's asymmetric with the bonding axis. If you have a triple bond, it is made out of one overlap that is sigma in symmetry, a bond that is going to be pi in symmetry, and the last overlap or the last bond is also gonna be pi in symmetry. Now, if you review the last lecture, we said that we needed to hybridize to accommodate certain angles that Vesper predicted. So if we continue with our Vesper structures, what you guys will see is we have angles that come from SN5 and SN6. For example, SN5, what we have are 90 degree angles, 120 degree angles, and 180 degree angles. What you guys will need is something hybridized as DSP3. You guys can follow the same logic for things that are steric number six. We need things that are 90 degrees, 180 degrees from each other, so the hybridization that you wanna use is D squared SP3. Now, I don't want to dwell on this too much, but I do want to summarize things for you guys. What we can focus in is the electronic groups in our molecule. No matter if you have no lone pairs or lone pairs, you have to use the same kind of arrangement of electronic groups. And so in this case, what we have is a trigonal planar molecule. Now, a trigonal planar molecule has angles of 120, so you would hybridize as sp2. We can also say for the bent molecule, what you will need is those electronic groups around 120 degrees. So again, sp2 hybridization helps us here. So what you'll notice is that steric number 3 will be sp2 hybridized. Steric number two will be sp hybridized. Steric number four, sp3. Steric number five, dsp3. Steric number six, d squared sp3. What you guys will notice is the steric number is going to tell you how many orbitals to hybridize. For example, steric number three, you need to hybridize three orbitals, an S, a P, and a P, so that leads to SP squared. For steric number five, what you guys need to hybridize is an S, a P, a P, and a P. Now that I've used up all my P orbitals, I'm gonna have to start involving D orbitals. And so this gets us to DSP3. So the long and short of this is, is if you know the electronic geometry, which is based on the steric numbers, you can tell me what the hybridization is. So let's culminate a lot of points that we've been talking about into this flow chart. What you guys will see is that if you do a certain action, you get, you'll get a certain amount of information out. For example, if you draw the Lewis structure, the Lewis structure tells you connectivity, who's connected to who, where the lone pairs are, and what things have double, single, or triple bonds. 
once you determine the steric number, you'll be able to tell me the electronic geometry. If you want to figure out the hybridization, well, the electronic geometry tells you that, which was explained on that last slide. Now, once you have the electronic geometry, you can count the lone pairs, and then you guys will get the molecular geometry. Now, if you have the molecular geometry, now you can tell me the angles and shape of where your molecules and atoms lie. Now, once you have the molecular geometry, you have where the atoms lie in space, you can draw dipole arrows. Once you draw dipole arrows, you can tell me if something is polar or nonpolar. So I want you guys to be very careful. If you get the Lewis dot structure, that does not tell you polarity. You have to work down the chart, draw the dipole arrows, and then you'll be able to tell me if something's polar or not. If you want to know the hybridization of a molecule, you only have to determine its electronic geometry and it will get you there. So make sure you know what information is garnered at what stage. All right, Chem 1A, I hope that made sense and remember to stay safe.